Hello, wonderful person. Welcome to Saturn. The year is 2017, September 15th, and the Cassini spacecraft is about to crash into Saturn, releasing the last signal we'll ever receive from it. Now, this is, or this was a historical mission, and it actually taught us quite a lot about Saturn, but today we're going to talk about the most unusual things we'll learn about this beautiful planet from this mission. Anyway, welcome to What the Math. So Saturn is full of mysteries and as Cassini showed, there's a lot more mysteries here than one mission can possibly discover. And one of those mysteries is of course the fact that um, we don't even know how many moons there are around Saturn. As a matter of fact, one of the first mysteries here is in regards to us finding a new moon being created right here in Saturn rings. Now it's kind of difficult to see them right now, I'm going to see if I can actually maybe create them a little bit better by adding slightly more particles for rings. And so we know that uh, these rings change quite a lot, mostly due to interaction with other moons and other objects in the system here. But what Cassini saw was actually something unusual. It actually saw a very unusual band in the ring system that stayed there for quite a while. And we later realized that it's very likely that this band was actually formed by a newly created moon. Now, we don't really know where this moon is located just yet, and we actually haven't seen it or taken a picture of it, but um, we have been able to calculate potential size and mass of that moon based on the amount of gravitational interaction it had with the rings, and we actually even have an unofficial name for it. Okay, it's more of a nickname. It's known as Peggy. And there's Peggy right there. It's just kind of randomly created, but basically it's a it's a rock. It's a moon that's about 2.5 kilometers in diameter, and this would make it the 63rd moon of Saturn if we actually take a look at it and are able to discover it in the telescope. But since uh, Cassini is no longer there to look for it for us. Uh, Hubble might not actually be able to see it because it's a little bit too small and we are a little bit too far away from Saturn. But we know that it's it's there and it's somewhere inside Saturn A ring. So for all we know, there is now 63 moons of Saturn. The other unusual discovery is in regards to another moon of Saturn known as Hyperion. And Hyperion, if I look around for it, is actually located right on the outskirts of the system. Now, the interesting thing about Hyperion, other than of course its shape, it has a very elongated shape, is that when Cassini passed by Hyperion, it basically flew by, and we can demonstrate this by doing the following. So there's our Cassini craft passing by Hyperion. So as it passed by, it actually experienced quite a lot of um, hydrostatic electricity. Basically the same kind of electricity you get from rubbing your feet on the carpet and then trying to zap someone. But the zapping here was obviously much, much, much stronger. Uh, we actually do get hydrostatic electricity on our own moon as well, and uh, a lot of spacecraft that land in there get zapped, and we have to be very careful with it. But that's because moon is actually very dry and is exposed to solar uh, charged particles all the time. And this is probably the same reason why Hyperion is also charged, or why it also has electrostatic charge. So studying moons like Hyperion and our own moon, we'll be able to understand this hydrostatic electricity in a little bit more detail, but most importantly, you might be actually, uh, we might be able to learn how to use this for potential power in the future, um, and maybe even find out how we can uh, use this to discover other things, like for example, using the electromagnetic map of the hydrostatic electricity to, to map the actual moon. Well, maybe all of this will be in the future. We don't really know yet. So that's unusual discovery number two. Unusual discovery number three is um, the Saturn itself. And so here, I'm going to see if we actually have it in Universe Sandbox. Um, so we know that Saturn has a very unusual, very strange looking hexagonal shaped storm that's formed on its one of its four sides. Now, this is not a really good representation of it. Uh, a much better rep is it representation is actually from the picture itself. But let me actually show you how we think it was formed. So some people actually started speculating that this was the reason uh, why there were aliens on Saturn, or maybe it was an artificial structure. And here's actually a 
kind of a similar shape that's already formed here, but uh, the actual reason for the formation of that shape is completely natural. So if you have winds uh, moving around the planet in, in, in the polar region, and they're moving around a very large sort of circumference, and here it's actually basically size of Earth. This is size of Earth. It's about 32,000 kilometers across. You'll notice that they actually start forming this very beautiful symmetrical pattern. So right now it kind of looks like a flower. If I kind of roll it for a few more uh, days, it's going to change into something else. And eventually it will settle for the most stable shape, which is actually going to be a hexagon. So right now it's slightly different flower. And um, Universe Sandbox is really good at simulating this. And basically, as you run this longer and longer, it will get more hexagonal and more like the actual thing, which is very, very cool. Um, I was, when I found out that Universe Sandbox can actually do that, I was really, really pleasantly surprised. So you don't always get hexagons right away, but with time, you usually do. So this unusual formation, this unusual hexagon on Saturn is actually a physical interaction of winds across a very large area in the polar region, and this creates the unusual hexagon shape that we see there. All right, so that's unusual discovery number three and unusual discovery number four, and I guess unusual discovery number five are actually on the same object. And as you probably guessed, this object is Titan, the second largest uh, moon in our solar system, the moon that's even larger than Mercury. Now, first uh, mystery here, first unusual discovery is uh, in regards to this beautiful moon actually having water. So it's not all methane and ethane. There is actually water on it. Okay, not on it, in it. Underneath the surface uh, ice, underneath the water ice, there is liquid oceans. And uh, these liquid oceans are very likely still there today and are very likely are slowly growing smaller and smaller because this moon is losing heat. And as it loses heat, the water inside freezes. We can maybe make it a little bit more dramatic just to, so you can understand better. The water inside of this freezes, increasing the rigidity of the moon and increasing its actual um, size because as water freezes, the moon expands. And basically, at, at some point, it's going to freeze completely. But as it freezes, the methane inside, inside of the moon gets released into the atmosphere and kind of stays there. And one of the reasons why there is so much methane um, in the atmosphere of Titan, basically it's mostly methane, is essentially because it all got released from inside of the moon over time. It used to be stored in ices and other components, and then it tur got turned into atmosphere uh, by the essentially freezing of the water and the ocean inside Titan. And this ocean is very likely very, very salty, kind of similar to uh, what we have here on Earth in Dead Sea. It's super, super salty ocean water. But with time, it will actually disappear. It will become completely frozen over and become turned into ice, essentially. And uh, this will remain as a methane and ethane planet, or not planet, but moon. Uh, and it will be a very interesting world to visit for sure, but we don't really have any plans anytime soon. And the last unusual discovery is also here, and that's in regards to the, uh, I guess, weather on Titan. And the weather on Titan is just weird. It's, it's kind of always very similar. The weather here is pretty much always raining, 100% humidity, but humidity here represents, or is represented by methane. So there's always a drizzle of methane droplets and you'll always need to have an umbrella. But obviously the temperatures here are a little bit chilly. It's about minus 183 degrees Celsius. And so the rain is very, very cold. So you do need to bring a very warm rain jacket and very warm rain boots. But also you might want to bring an oxygen tank. But you don't have to bring in a spacesuit because uh, this planet has a lot of atmospheric pressure. So these are the five main unusual things we discovered about Titan from the Cassini mission and uh, from Huygens' mission that landed on Titan. And so these are the five unusual and very, very cool discoveries uh, from the Cassini mission that visited Saturn. The mission that started uh, 20 years ago for me, basically back in 1997, and that ended with a beautiful uh, crash into the Saturn's atmosphere. So these five unusual uh, discoveries will hopefully help us understand the universe a little bit better. And maybe one day we'll go back here and even colonize Titan because that would be super, super cool.
Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and hopefully you learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos. And come back tomorrow to learn something completely different. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. Now, as we're flying away from beautiful Saturn, let's maybe explore it. Because we have this power of exploring things.